we've been out shopping today and we've got marshipan and a bowl with a owl inside of course now oops let's see oh oh no I'm breaking it whoa this isn't that easy so can the computer do it better can we do it better in software oh um, let me show you something else do -do 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 -do. switch it on if we take the ball and roll it Ooh. Look and see if it gets too close, it uh, can't detect it. So maybe we'll put something here to stop it. Hello, so uh, after last video I had to make the coupling and it took some time to figure out how I was going to do that. So I found some uh, steel wire and uh, yeah, made a hole in the actuator and then shredded it over or protruded it so I just put the actuator down on the on the, on the cable and bent it into shape, the, the wire into shape so uh, so it, yeah, as you can see come on, going in And uh, there's one thing I have to say about this servo that I bought, and I, I'm not blaming anyone for this. Uh, I abused it, as you can see. The problem here is that um, these servos, they have, uh, and you will see that later in this video also, that they have so very poor um, sprockets. The material that is made of, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's nylon. Um, the thing is that I have another servo that I will replace later, as you also can see in the video. It's a uh, much higher quality though. So, uh, so if you're going to use this servo, and they are super cheap, I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know exactly nowadays, but maybe three or four dollars, I think. So I can't uh, complain, but um, here you can see it. You have to be. You don't want to have any force on it. And on this uh, replay, you can see that. Uh, okay, of course, when the top is off, it will bend like this. But in designs like this, you have to have a very sturdy um, mount for all these sprockets because when they are turning, there's enormous force going on in there. So, uh, yeah, anyway. So this is so uh, very crude. The way I'm mounting everything here. But, uh, yeah, just the concept. So, uh, as long as it sticks, <laughs> I'll be alright. Just re reinforce it. The little dab of glue wouldn't work at all. And some glue on that chip there. <laughs> anyway. Actually, this glue is much stronger than it seems. Uh, at least if you try and uh, if you get a good surface, uh, a large surface to uh, to glue on. So I can actually lift the whole unit up by the by the beam. Oh, it's not a beam here; it's a more like a channel. Yeah, 
here I'm uh, gluing together that contact because they are individual single contacts and I want all those four uh, to be together so so I make one large header instead so mm, it's easier to unplug and plug not that I'm going to unplug it that much anyway so which is easier to to handle So let's install the microcontroller on the board, the development board. Okay, so I had the wrong, wrong ship there. That was the week two Commodore 64 week two. <laughs> so just checking that all the pins are in there. So, so let's fire it up. Add some power. So this is just a USB cable shielded one and then there's a program in it that I had from before now let's switch on the power to the LED there and I'm trying to dial the pot meter but, but it's not connected if you see this jumper up there now that I connect it to one of the pins on the microcontroller now I can adjust it so the thing is that I was trying to make a uh, load, an electronic load. So therefore I can adjust the voltage and uh, it has to read the correct voltage. And by pushing one of the buttons here. And the button here that selects between constant power, current and uh, resistance. And for current that is easy though because then uh, then you just select what current you want and then uh, yeah the microcontroller then produces a voltage that uh, signifies the current you want but if it's power then um, it's different because then you have to calculate what current you want to keep it constant anyway that's another project so here's uh, my model airplane so I haven't flown it in many years because I um, yeah I almost did something stupid with it so not going to get into that right now <laughs> anyway I want servo I want to borrow that servo so it's a 12 gram and the one we have from before the blue one is 9 gram so this is perfect okay so something is broken in my servo here it's the sprockets so I've gotten the uh, servo out from my model airplane and that was working uh, charmingly, so I'm gonna put that inside here. Um, but first, I'll show you how how this is broken because it's uh, transparent, so we can see how it works. Yeah, but before we can do that, we need to uh, take it loose, and that's uh, easier said than done because it was really sitting hard. But we do some movie magic; it's loose. So here's the new one. Tacking it down. Now only gluing it on one side this time, so it's easier to remove. Because the you can see it skipping in here. And there it's stalled. And here's a program for the ultrasonic transducer running. 
So there's no distance machine yet. That's noise from the ultrasonic waves. And check out the screen there. The, the yellow on the top, that's the pulse that I'm sending from the microcontroller. And the pulse you see in the green is uh, the echo. So the width of that pulse is what we are going to measure. So we use a timer. And now I have a program running that reads out the timer and, and sends it to the display, the LCD display. You can see the numbers are going up, but whoops! You can see that the timer is overflowing there. And here is this again. You can see when I get to this point, the timer overflows. So the counter is ticking too fast. So that means that it uh, wraps around before you hit the end also. So the wave takes too long. <laughs> so what I'm doing here, and we'll look at the code later, I'm slowing down the timer by half. That's what we're doing. It's called pre-scaling. That's done in hardware. Yeah, it just has to uh, send some information to a register, and the magic happens. Now I'm programming it back again. And I don't have to push anything else. Uh, the program is already up and running, as you can see. And then... Let's see... Oh, it's uh, different numbers there, so... Yes... Now I can move my hand all over to the other side without the timer wrapping over or overflowing. So I would just want to say thank you for watching and the next video we'll look at the code. Because right now the code is a little bit messy. So thanks for watching!